Okay, this one, this circuit is called a lockout relay circuit or a lockout circuit. Uh, up here in high voltage, you've just got an air conditioner, condenser fan motor, uh, two sets of contacts for the contactor actuated by this contactor here. And a thermostat, normally open thermostat, closes on rise in temperature, normally closed limit switch, normally closed pressure switch, and normally closed lockout relay contacts. And here's your lockout relay coil. Now, let's go ahead and cycle this thing on under normal conditions. Okay, now we've cycled this thing on, that means we've closed the thermostat. Okay, power passes through the thermostat, through the normally closed limit switch, through the low pressure switch, through the normally closed lockout relay contacts to energize C. Now note, LOR does not energize. The reason being, electricity has an easy path to go through here because it's just a number of switches and LOR is a low. So the power is going to go through the switches and energize C. Uh, the contactor coil, which is going to close C contacts here and here, which will start the compressor and the condenser fan motor. Okay, now we have uh, a situation right here where the low pressure switch has opened. Okay, when the low pressure switch opens, power can no longer pass through the thermostat, the limit switch, pressure switch, and the lockout relay normally closed to energize the contact. That interrupts that circuit. But because this circuit is open, the only path for electricity to get from one side to the other is to pass through the lockout relay coil. Okay, goes through here, goes through here, does not energize the contactor. Why doesn't it energize the contactor? Well, if you look at this closely, you can see here's one load, there is a second load. Okay, with two loads in a row where the difference in size of the loads, because C is a very large load, and the LOR relay is very small, then only the small one will energize. This is a large coil. This is a, it takes a fair amount of amperage to operate this coil. This is a very small coil, very small. So what it does is it passes through the thermostat, passes through the lockout relay coil, goes over to the contactor, uh, contactor coil, and because the amperage is limited by the lockout relay coil, it will not energize. C will not energize. And of course, up here you can see C contacts are open. When we have an open switch here, that means the power passes through the lockout relay, through the contactor without energizing the contactor, and then it opens the lockout relay contacts. Now, what happens when the pressure switch closes again? Nothing. Because when this closes again, the lockout relay is still energized, which this set of contacts is only allowing the power to go through the lockout relay coil. Like that. 
Now the interesting thing about this is that if this pressure switch or the limit switch open during the operation of the equipment, the lockout relay will be energized, open the lockout contacts, shut off the contactor, even when the low pressure switch closes again, you still have lockout relay open. The only way to get this whole thing back to where it was is to shut the power off or turn the thermostat off and then turn it back on. Which will de-energize lockout relay coil and start over again. That's the lockout circuit. It's actually a very simple circuit. Uh, it's been used on many things. It's done electronically now for the most part, but this is still a very viable safety control that shuts down equipment when uh, there is a safety switch of some type shuts off and will not start again until someone takes action, such as shut the machine off and start it over. So that's the lockout really.